What to do when you mess up. One of the most fascinating things about God that I have observed over the years is that people that you may perceive as an enemy are not necessarily enemies in the eyes of God. This is what Jonah found out. Jonah found out that God doesn't need anyone's permission to forgive anyone. Jonah sees the Lord turned away his anger from Nineveh and he thinks it's evil. He believes that Nineveh and the Assyrians are enemies so wicked and evil that they should not be spared ever for any reason. They should pay for what they've done. Jonah chapter 4 verse 2, he prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Here Jonah reveals why he actually ran from God in the first place. He didn't want to go to Nineveh because he knew the power of God's word. He did not want the people of Nineveh to experience the love of God. Jonah knew of the Lord's love for his creation, and he didn't want the people of Nineveh to experience God's forgiveness. Jonah knew that God was full of grace and mercy, and that was why he was afraid to tell the people of Nineveh. Jonah wanted the people of Nineveh to lay in the bed they created. You have heard the saying, quote, you made your bed, now lie in it. And that is what most people are like. People have this attitude towards other people, quote, you've made your bed, now lie in it. Allow me to speak for myself and my life. I am glad that God doesn't have this attitude towards his children, because in my life, I have made plenty of beds that I didn't lie in, purely because of the mercy and grace of God. The mercy of God Imagine if you've reaped every single one of the bad decisions you have made in your life. God is merciful. Aren't you glad that God does not behave like a human? Just imagine if God behaved like a human. And you know how mean and cruel human beings can be. Imagine if God was like human beings and was biased and he only forgave one specific type of people. Or imagine if God cared about the opinions of others. I am glad that God is not like that and that he is a God of mercy and that he is a God that doesn't please people or answer to anyone. We as children of God should also extend grace to others, but that's not the modern church. The modern church is full of condemnation. Yes, we are to call out sin. Yes, we are to not dance around the subject of sin. But it is not our duty to be the judge and to proceed on to condemn individuals and proceed to bury them alive. In my years of experience in the Christian church, I have seen people practically chased out of church because they fell into sin. One young lady comes to mind. When I was still in youth ministry, a young lady had a child out of wedlock and how this church turned on this young lady. We are going back several decades ago so having a child outside of marriage wasn't as normalized as it is today. So what she did was particularly unusual. People at the church stopped talking to her and gossiped about her quite aggressively. Rather than counseling her and directing her to the Lord, people were mean and aggressive to her. If you have committed sexual sin, your life is not over. Fornication is wrong according to God's word. It is a sin. Adultery is wrong according to God's word. It is a sin. Divorce is wrong unless it is because of marital unfaithfulness. But one thing that you must remember is none of these sins are the unforgivable sin. There are people who will attempt to beat you with a stick and make you feel because you have committed one of these sins, you are doomed to hell. That is a lie. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 through 10 King James Version says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So what do I do when I mess up? What do I do when I have just sinned? You must confess your sin. Yes, you have messed up. 
You may have committed a sin that you should have never committed. You may have done something that you regret. Don't try to hide that sin from God. Confess it. God is not a man who will hold grudges against you. God is not a person. Stop comparing God to the people that you know. God is not a human being who will always hold a particular sin over your head. God is nothing like that. When God forgives you, he forgives you for good. This is not a license to sin and then ask for forgiveness later. No, no, no. We are told in the Bible to deal ruthlessly and decisively with sin. We are not to sin willfully with the intention of asking forgiveness later. We are not to plan to sin with the attitude, oh well, I will confess my sins later. That is wrong. God's love and mercy is not a free pass for us to willfully live in sin. However, God knew that although we are saved, we will still sin because we are not perfect beings, and he made provisions for us to get right with the Lord when we do sin. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. David committed sexual sin and murder. Bathsheba was bathing, and David, who was supposed to be at war fighting with his men, saw her. He was walking around the palace when he saw Bathsheba bathing. David sinned, and he tried to cover his sins. He went to commit adultery with her, and she got pregnant. David made a terrible mistake trying to cover her sin. He called the husband of Bathsheba from war and wanted to force him to sleep with his wife so that he would think the child was his. This man refused. David thought in his heart that killing this man would be the only way to cover his tracks. And David did just that. He was not successful in covering this sin and he was punished. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 King James Version He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. And if God forgave David, he can forgive you in whatever sins you may have committed. The sins you may have committed may have wronged other people. I encourage you to seek forgiveness. However, if the people you have wronged do not forgive you, the forgiveness of the Lord is not hinged in their approval or their consent. God does not need the approval of anyone. All I'm saying is that you don't need to confess your sin to me. You don't need to confess it to anyone, but go before the Lord and confess and repent. God will forgive you. Repent and restore your relationship with God. God will forgive you. Repent and restore your relationship with God.